Hi everyone, this is Erin from Sadler Science, and today we will be discussing how to use evidence statements to write your objectives. In this video, I will discuss what evidence statements are and how you can find them, how to read an evidence statement, and finally, how to write objectives and find vocabulary using the evidence statements. Before we get started, I have a few warnings about the use of evidence statements. To start, when you are using evidence statements to write objectives, the objectives can kind of sound like older versions of objectives that you may have written based on old standards. In the old standards, there were tons of things that students had to know. It is important that you focus on key concepts that students should walk away knowing but make sure that you are also including science and engineering practices and cross-cutting concepts. The ultimate goal is a three-dimensional approach that focuses on depth. If your state has created their own framework, it's important that you also review this framework when you're writing your objectives to make sure that you didn't leave anything out. However, for many states, there is no written framework at this time. Finally, evidence statements do not include alignment with math or ELA common core standards, as we might find in the DCI arrangement of the standards. Again, these are just things for you to be aware of. These resources aren't perfect, but I do use them regularly because I still find them to be valuable. So let's start by talking about what an evidence statement is. There is one evidence statement for each performance expectation, and they provide details for how students will demonstrate how they have met that performance expectation. They are available for all performance expectations for kindergarten through high school. Remember that the performance expectation describes how a student will be assessed on the standard. By writing objectives using these evidence statements, you are also really looking at what your assessments need to have in them as well. So this is a great backwards planning tool. These evidence statements are also very easy to find. For me, I just Google the number of the performance expectation and the words evidence statements and PDF. You can also find these evidence statements directly on the NextGen Science website. Let's take a look at the evidence statements. At the top of the evidence statements, there is the performance expectation. Underneath the performance expectation, there are the science and engineering practices, disciplinary core ideas, and cross-cutting concepts that are specific to this performance expectation. Beneath the three-dimensional components, there is a section on observable features of the student performance by the end of the course. These observable features include things that students should know and be able to do. While this bottom section will look similar in each evidence statement, it will have some specific components that directly relate to the type of performance expectation. For example, in this performance expectation, the science and engineering practice is developing and using a model. In the observable features section, there is information about components of the model. I use the entire evidence statement to generate objectives. I read through from top to bottom and determine what students need to be able to do in order to meet this performance expectation. Be sure to include the cross-cutting concepts as these are most often left out of the unit planning process. While I am doing this, I also start a list of vocabulary terms that students will need to know. I will keep track of these objectives in my NGSS unit planning organizer. This resource is available on my TPT store, but you could also use your own Google or Word document. For the performance expectation MSPS 1-5, students are expected to develop and use a model to describe how the total number of atoms does not change in a chemical reaction and thus mass is conserved. My first objectives will be list each type of atom that is present in a chemical reaction. I'm also going to add words like atom and chemical and mass to my vocabulary.
Students will also need to be able to distinguish between a chemical change and a physical change. When I look at the science and engineering practices, students will need to develop a model to describe unobservable mechanisms. Therefore, my next objective might be something like, use a model to demonstrate what occurs in a chemical reaction. Depending on where I am in my year, I might have to include specific objectives about creating a model. When you are writing these objectives, remember that they don't have to be perfect yet. You can always go back and edit them later. The disciplinary core idea states that substances react chemically in characteristic ways. In a chemical process, the atoms that make up the original substances are regrouped into different molecules, and these new substances have different properties from those of the reactants. Objectives for this section might be distinguish between atoms and molecules, identify the properties of a given substance. The cross-cutting concept for this performance expectation is energy and matter. It states that matter is conserved because the atoms are conserved in a physical and chemical process. My objective might be something like using a balanced chemical equation, create a diagram that shows how the total number of atoms on both sides of a reaction are the same, and describe the relationship between the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products. This also means that students will need to be able to distinguish between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. In the section, Components of the Model, it states that students will need to identify the relevant components for a given chemical reaction, including the types and number of molecules that make up the reactants and the types and number of molecules that make up the products. In my classroom, we look at very simple balanced equations to meet this need. Therefore, students will need to be able to Explain what the coefficient in a chemical equation represents. This shows how many of each type of molecule are present. It's important to note that the evidence statement does not specifically state anything about balancing equations. I will not focus on teaching my students how to balance an equation, but rather what the balanced equation means. In the relationship section, it states each molecule in each of the reactants or product is made up of the same type and number of atoms. Therefore, I will add the following objective. When given a chemical formula, identify the type and number of each atom that is present. This is the basic process that I use to write my objectives. You will start noticing some overlap and of course, these objectives are not in the order that I will teach them in. Once I have gone through the entire evidence statement, I will edit my objectives and put them in the order that I plan to teach them in. I usually do this by writing each objective on sticky notes and moving them around until I can find a logical storyline. As you are going through your unit planning process, you will continue this editing process. I hope that this has been helpful to you. Please let me know if you have any questions regarding this process. Come back soon for more information on planning a unit.